everyone, it's Shannon here for Hero Arts. In today's video, we are going to create this card featuring the April My Monthly Hero Kit. We're going to combine the included cover plate, coordinating dies, as well as the layering stencils to create this bold, beautiful background. We're going to start with this beautiful cover plate die, which is included in the Classic and Premium Kit. I'm going to die cut an A2 panel of Adriatic cardstock with this beautiful cover plate die. I love how dark um, teal this cardstock is. It's really, really pretty. After I run it through my die cutting machine, we're basically going to use the impression or the die cut impression that the die makes to help us line up these stencils really easily and add some additional texture. Here are the color layering stencils. They're each numbered. I'm going to start with number one. I'm actually going to, every time I use the stencils, today I'll be using them in order, starting with number one and working my way through. Uh, once I positioned the stencil over my die cut panel, I will then ink blend lightly over the stencil with Deep Ocean Core ink. I'm doing a very light blend just because I want to keep the color um, softer because we're going to use this ink for stencil two and we're going to go a little bit more, we're going to go more heavy handed with it for stencil two so we get some contrast. So I did tap off between before I touched my paper to again, kind of really control the intensity of the color. So now that I've positioned stencil two, I'm ready to ink blend again with that deep ocean, this time a little bit more heavy handedly than I ink blended the over the last stencil. And this is gonna create that nice contrast. Cause we are actually starting with a pretty dark cardstock to begin with. So we do have to be kind of mindful of um, the intensity of our layers if we still want to get contrast between each one of our layers. So now I moved on to the final stencil in this color layering set and I positioned it over my panel and I'm going to move on to a different ink. This is nautical, an even darker, richer blue. We're going to ink blend over all the openings, keeping things really simple here, not doing any gradations or anything with these stencils, just making sure I have nice contrast so you can see all the beautiful details that these layering stencils add. And here's that finished panel, which is stunning all on its own. This would be a beautiful background if you just used as is, but we are going to step it up a bit and grab these awesome coordinating frame cuts. These dies are included in the classic and premium kit and they match many of the images that you see in the cover plate and um, it with the stencil so because they all work together so i just went ahead and grabbed all the butterflies and the flowers in that set of dies and die cut some dove white cardstock then i'm going to position them here over a sticky mat to kind of hold these small die cuts in place and i'm actually going to go a little bit extra mile here and um, arrange the ones that I want in this color, which happens to be tangerine or an orange, and arrange them so they fit or positioned um, under this first stencil in the right spot. And because this mat is sticky, these die cuts will stay in place. So when I'm done with stencil one, which I did do in tangerine, but very lightly, kind of similar to how we did the deep ocean earlier, once I finish with that stencil one, I can just position stencil two and those die cuts should still be in the same spot and making it a little bit easier to transition between stencils for each one of these die cuts. So now I'm on to stencil two, back with tangerine, this time a little bit darker, a little bit more heavy handed to get that medium shade. And now we're on to stencil three. I'm still ink blending with tangerine, but this time I'm going as heavy handedly as I possibly can to get this orange as dark as possible. So we do have that, that contrast between the medium shade. And for stencil three, I did have to do a little bit of adjusting to some of my die cuts because um, you're probably not gonna get them perfectly arranged on your sticky mat or whatever mat you're using to hold them in place the first go. So you might find you have to tweak them a little bit. If this seems a little tricky for you or too much work to kind of get them arranged to the stencil, then bring the stencil to your die cut. Don't, don't and just do them one at a time. I thought for video purposes and filming purposes, it was a little bit easier and worth the extra effort to actually 
um, do it all in one, do all my grouping in one go. So that first grouping was all done in tangerine. We're now onto our second grouping of die cuts, which I'm now ink blending in spicy mustard. Again, I've started with that first stencil, did a light blend over the die cuts with spicy mustard. Just finished up with the second stencil with a little bit more heavy handed blend of that spicy mustard. And now I'm positioning stencil three. Here you can see I did have to tweak just like I mentioned earlier for my tangerine um, die cuts, did have to tweak the position of one of my die cuts because when I got to stencil three, I realized it wasn't quite in the right spot. So I did have to adjust the, the positioning of that. But once I got it in the right spot, it's really quick and easy to ink blend that third and final layer with that, uh, for in this instance, spicy mustard to finish off these die cuts. And this one, again, I did very heavy handed blend with that third layer to get a lot of contrast. Now we're on to our third and final grouping of our flower and butterfly die cuts. I'm going to ink blend over them lightly with uh, grape juice core ink. Beautiful, beautiful purple. I love this purple. After I finish with stencil one, I've grabbed stencil two and just like all our previous blends that we've done for our other groupings, I'm doing a little bit more heavy handed for this second layer to kind of create a medium shade. Once I finish with that, we'll be ready for our final bit of blending with stencil three for our final grouping of die cuts. Now I did have to die cut some of the flowers twice uh, or multiple times actually. There's these kind of just single flowers, kind of like buttercup flowers. There's three in total of those. So I had to die cut though two more. Um, from the original set that I die cut in the beginning. And then there's actually one other flower with uh, leaves attached. I had to die cut that one more time because there's two of those. So that once you die cut those extra flowers, that's the only additional die cutting you have to do. The butterflies, you just die cut all, every single butterfly die once and you'll have enough butterflies for your whole panel. Now that I've finished ink blending my die cuts, we're gonna add some additional details to these die cuts. This is just a little fun thing that I love to do to my die cuts. Typically I don't use a black like I'm doing here. I'm starting off with this black multi-liner and just kind of adding almost like a highlight, but obviously this is a black, so it's not quite a highlight, but kind of adding like a shadow to some of the underside, um, what I would dis distinguish as the underside of some of the design elements in the wings. Really honestly, it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about your light source so much. Just add a little bit of black to some of the designs in the wings. And then once you finish with the black, you'll grab a white gel pen and add a highlight kind of in the opposite area of or opposite side of some of those details. Please don't, if you decide to do this, don't overthink it. It's pretty simple. You just want to get some details on here. Some of it can be just little spots and not even like a highlight. Just to add some more interest to these die cuts and make them pop a little bit more away from the background. I love doing this. I think it really steps up my stenciled images to another level because now you're adding this like third and final little bit of interest and I really like what it does to my images. So now we're gonna move on to our sentiment. I'm using the included clear messages stamp set that's in both the classic and the premium April kits. I'm gonna stamp it onto this scrap of Adriatic cardstock. Once I get that sentiment in position, I'll then ink it up with nautical, kind of keeping our colors all consistent, all the same so it doesn't seem jarring. And stamp it a couple times in that nautical just so my sentiment is nice and bold and crisp. After I stamp my sentiment, I'm actually gonna go ahead and fussy cut this out. I really like the look of a fussy cut sentiment. I like my border being nice and close to my stamped letters or words. Uh, but for this sentiment in particular, you could actually cut it out and make it a sentiment strip instead. It's nice and linear, so it will actually work for a sentiment strip quite beautifully. But here's my finished fussy cut sentiment. Now that that's done, we're actually ready to kind of put this card all together. I have an A2 top holding white card base, and the first thing I'm gonna do is adhere my panel to the card front. I am using liquid glue, and I am, and this is also obviously kind of a recycled panel. That's why it's that heat embossing, that gold heat embossing on the back. But once I get this panel stuck down, nobody will know that that was ever there to begin with. I was a little sloppy with my liquid glue and some came out from behind one of the wings. So I just grabbed my tweezers to kind of 
remove that off of the card front. Once that panel is stuck down, I did notice I had a little bit of this extra little sliver of white cardstock kind of poking through. So I did grab my scissors and just trim it off on both the um, front panel and as well as the back panel of my card base. And now we're ready to move on to the die cuts. I'm gonna start with the large butterfly here and I did kind of fold the wings up a little bit and then added liquid adhesive to the body of the butterfly and stuck that down. I'm being careful only to add that liquid adhesive to the body. I don't wanna get any of that glue on the wings because I want to be able to pop these wings up later. And as, you, as I pointed out earlier, I did fold the butterfly wings on each one of these butterflies a little bit before I stuck them down just to encourage that fold later on. And I will pop them up better once I get all these die cuts stuck down to my front panel. So I'm just working my way through all my butterflies here. And once I get all those stuck down, we will move on to the flowers. Now I do want to point out that I did end up cutting off the uh, leaves on the a couple of the flowers here um, and that's just to make it a little less busy. Now I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue to the bottom of each one of these flowers and sticking it down onto the card uh, card front. I'm avoiding getting of that liquid completely covering the back of the flowers with the liquid glue because I also want to pop those uh, die cuts up as well. Once I finish with that last flower, I'm gonna go move on to my sentiment. I've added some foam adhesive to the back side of the sentiment. I'll just center it and place it down onto my card front. And once I get that sentiment nice and centered, the last thing we're gonna do is pop up those die cuts. I use the tweezers to kind of help me um, grab, kind of get under there and lift the, the die cuts up. We just want to add, just bring those wings up a little bit, bring the front of the, the flowers up a little bit for, a, for some dimension. And once we finish with those die cuts, this card is complete. I'll hold it to the camera so you can get a good look at all the details in this really bold and vibrant background. Kind of reminds me of like Alice in Wonderland a little bit. I, I think it's just kind of this really rich colors, really rich palette. I love the details in the wings, that little added detail of the Copic marker and gel pen really it adds more interest to those images. And of course, the colors just, I think, draw you in. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If any questions about the products I use, please check out the links below in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.